There's one last class of macromolecules present in your food and in your body. Whether or not you've heard the word lipid before, you've most likely seen the two most common and important lipids on nutrition facts labels. Fats, which look something like this, and cholesterol, which looks something like this. Now these two molecules look very different from each other, but they are both put in the class of lipids because of how they interact with water. They are both what's called hydrophobic, that is, they are, don't have any charged regions. Water molecules are polar, meaning they have a negative end and a positive end. Because of this, water can adhere to most substances by making hydrogen bonds. But fats, like oil, have no charges at all, and so these bonds cannot form, and water and oil don't mix. Just like you always have to shake up that vinaigrette dressing so that you don't just get oil. You get the oil and you get the good vinegar at the bottom. This is also why water makes large droplets that slide right off of wax paper. The water molecules are not able to adhere to the wax. Waxes and oils are some of the most common examples of lipids. Waxes and oils are some of the most common lipids found in our bodies. So how do our cells build fat molecules? Well, the recipe is simple. Take one glycerol molecule, add three fatty acids, attaching each one in turn, and voila, you have a typical fat molecule, also known as a triglyceride. Tri means three, like tricycle or triceratops or triangle. Notice a triglyceride is not quite a polymer. It's not one long chain of monomer after monomer after monomer attached together. However, it's still considered a macromolecule because it is organic. It has carbons running through the center. And thanks to those carbons and their bonding abilities, the molecule is quite complex. The carbons and the hydrogens inside each of these fatty acids share their electrons very evenly and thus do not have any charge. This is why water does not stick to fatty acids or any molecule that contains a fatty acid, such as a triglyceride. The even sharing of electrons also means that this carbon to hydrogen bond stores a lot of energy. And since this hydrocarbon bond exists over and over and over again inside each of these molecules, triglycerides store a lot of energy. So the fat tissue in our body is actually just made of a bunch of triglycerides. Now let's try another math equation. What if we were to take a glycerol and just add two fatty acids? And rather than adding a third, we'll add what's called a phosphate group that has negative charges. If we do that, join them all together here, we make a new class of lipids called phospholipids. Phospholipids are an elegant example of form following function. The phosphate group is charged, which means that the head of the molecule is hydrophilic. While the tail end is hydrophobic. This molecule is usually represented by this diagram that looks kind of like a lollipop with two sticks. Because the heads are hydrophilic and they like facing towards water, and the tails are hydrophobic, which means that they prefer to face away from water, if I were to take a bunch of these phospholipids and drop them into water and mix them around, they would form a very interesting structure. This bilayer of phospholipids is a very basic membrane. And when a cell wants to regulate what goes in and what comes out, it needs a membrane, a waterproof membrane, around its outside. And these phospholipids are just perfect for the job. So cell membranes, no matter where you find them, are made of phospholipids. So lipids are good for storing energy, they're good for making membranes, and lastly, they're good signal molecules. Cholesterol and its family of chemical relatives called the steroids are the best example. Steroid hormones stimulate growth, sex drive, and secondary sexual characteristics. You might be familiar with some of them. Take testosterone as an example, or estrogen. Testosterone and estrogen have very similar shapes to cholesterol, and cells take a cholesterol molecule and modify it slightly in order to construct these two hormones. Now like any lipid, cholesterol, testosterone, and estrogen, are all hydrophobic. Because steroids like estrogen and testosterone are hydrophobic, they are some of the few molecules that can pass through the hydrophobic center of a membrane. If this makes steroids excellent signaling molecules. They can enter your cells with ease and tell those cells to change 
whether that means to build a little more hair in some areas, to cause you to have a deeper voice, to increase your sex drive, or to drive your menstrual cycle. At this point you may be feeling a little overwhelmed. Don't worry, you're not alone. Doctors, nurses, pharmacists, chemists, nutritionists, and many other researchers are trying to understand exactly how all of these molecules behave in your body and why they are so important. Our internal chemistry is very complex, so our goal is simply to master the basic vocabulary. To overview, we are made of macromolecules. There are four kinds of macromolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. All of these macromolecules are organic, that is carbon-based. Because they are carbon-based, they are able to be quite complex in structure. All of them are assembled from smaller molecules, and the way these smaller molecules are assembled determines the structure and the function of the whole macromolecule. Most macromolecules are polymers, that is, long chains of monomers. A carbohydrate polymer is called a polysaccharide. Polysaccharides are built from multiple monosaccharides strung together. Carbohydrates provide our bodies with a quick source of energy and structural support. The polymer of a protein is called a polypeptide. Polypeptides are built from a long chain of amino acids. These proteins are the doers, the movers, the supporters, the speeder-uppers of reactions in our bodies. Lastly, nucleic acids are also polymers. Specifically, they are long chains of nucleotides, and the order of these nucleotides spells out our genetic code, which makes our proteins, and thus our traits. Though not technically polymers, lipids are also made of subunits. Those subunits are quite diverse, but all lipids are hydrophobic. Because they're hydrophobic, they're excellent at making waterproof barriers in our cells and sending signals through those barriers. Lastly, the hydrocarbon bonds inside these fats are numerous and they store lots of energy, making lipids the primary energy storage molecule in our bodies. Knowing this, I hope that next time you're looking at your food, or you're watching an organism doing its living thing, you'll have a better sense of the connection. We are rearranged and reassembled versions of what we eat. Our bodies are rearrangers and reassemblers of the same tiny molecules. And the fact that we're living is rooted in the properties of the smallest substances that make us up. And I think that's kind of cool.